If we simply constrain resources, it's forced frugality. You have to work with those parameters, but something greater happens and it's innovation. Welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Chris Noggle, and I have an awesome guest today, a guest that wrote a book that literally transformed not just my personal life, but the way I teach people how to become the bank. And not only that, it transformed the way we do business. And folks, today's episode, it's going to be short, it's going to be sweet, but it's going to have something in it for you because we've got a special thing that Mike's uh, Mike's uh, sponsor, sorry, time out, edit that section out, I'm going to redo that, that Mike's sponsor is going to give away 10 books today. And we're going to cover that in a little bit. So not only are you going to learn about this, some of you are actually going to have a book called Profit First mailed right to your door. So Mike, welcome back to the show. Chris, it's a joy to be back. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, again, no, but this one's even better because I know when you came on before the podcast was really focused around real estate and today yeah. it's a lot bigger audience where it's just money. And, you know, let's just start real quick, Mike, we're talking a little bit about your book, Profit First. Now, I know you've got a bunch of other books. You got Profit First, you got Clockwork, you got Surge, and you got your brand new book that I know we're going to hit on today called All In. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to hear about that and really excited to read that. But let's come back to the one that really changed it all, Profit First. How did that whole book come to be? So the little hidden secret, which is not so secret, is every book I've written, Chris, is actually a problem or challenge I have in my own life or my business that I'm looking to fix. And then I devote time to researching, finding a solution, testing it out myself, people that are willing to try things out early. And then I write into a book. So with, with Profit First, I'd grown some businesses and sold them, but they were never profitable when I was running them. It was so stressful. And I started to believe that, oh, I guess you don't make a profit until you exit. That's when you make your money. So I just tried to do that as my third business. I became an angel investor, started 10 companies. None of them were profitable. None of them were sellable. They all collapsed. And I lost everything. And uh, it was so bad that my daughter came to me with her piggy bank when I revealed to my family we we're going to lose our house, which we did. And she volunteered that piggy bank to save the family. I was ashamed and embarrassed, humbled, but it also became this great wake up call that I had no clue how profit works. I thought it was all about top line thinking. So I devoted myself to learn and master profit. And that ultimately became the profit first system. I've been living it now for 15 years. Uh, and have a, I've had a profit distribution every single quarter since then, and they've gotten bigger and better. Um, and I'm proud to say we have, we're approaching 1 million companies that have deployed profit first now. That's incredible. And, you know, yeah. I got a three-year-old daughter and I forgot right. about that part of your story, but just thinking about that, you know, if I hit hard times and my daughter brought me her piggy bank mm. and said, daddy, I want to help, like, I'd lose it, man. I would just, and, and, you know, father to father, like, and I'm sure the audience, any of you that are, that are fathers or even mothers out there, just imagine that circumstance like that gets you to take action and really start thinking about things. And, and, uh, profit first is just an incredible book. Listen, folks, we don't have a whole lot of time to get into what profit first is, but I want to just tell a quick story, Mike, of, you know, what I did after I read that book. Now I read hundreds of books and, Love it. You know, like, yeah, I take a lot, I take a little bit out of every book, but I rarely take a lot out of <laughs> one book and apply it. And when your book came to me, obviously I was teaching people how to become their own banks uh, and showing them how to use the infinite banking concept, which is quite simple. It's a banking system that allows them to just move money. And the one thing we were always missing is just that that profit first, that separate account. And in your book, I learned all about how the segregation of bank accounts for specific uses could be used. But then I took that and I said, all right, we're going to take this and we're going to create a segregated account to be used with the infinite banking. I've been teaching this every year. I don't even remember how long ago that was, four years ago, three years ago that you were on. And mm. we've been teaching that ever since. But oh, yeah. that's how I teach your system in a little different way. But let me take it back to the business. You just mentioned you have taken quarterly profits every single quarter since you started. Well, I'm happy yeah. to say, Mike, I've never missed one either. Yeah. But not only yes. that, I've got 19 different companies. My bookkeeper has been instructed to create separate accounts, all the different ones you said. We just call them something different. Yeah. And I take profits from every company. I never did this before, Mike. Even Love in my it. real estate companies, I never took profits because there was just never any money. Yeah. But you know what? When I started applying what I learned in Profit First, all of a sudden there was money every yeah. quarter, not just some quarters, every quarter yeah. when prior to that, there was never 
any money in my accounts. And yeah. like you, every quarter, the amount has grown and grown and grown. It has not affected my business. It hasn't hurt my business. The only thing it's done is made me work harder because I know every quarter, the harder I work, the bigger that number is that I get. Now, the only problem, and you got to write a book on this, is as those quarterly profits get bigger, Uncle Sam starts to take his fair share. He becomes a partner in my business in a way that I don't like. Yeah, so I know. I that's know. a whole nother topic. But uh, that's how I've done it, Mike. I I've literally become a student of what your book it. taught me. And I have not strayed from that. It's rooted in uh, Parkinson's law. And I'm not surprised, Chris, you've had the success you've had because it's wired into all of humanity. And so a quick lesson on this is Parkinson was a theorist in the 1950s who noticed that it's human nature that as a resource expands its availability, that we consume more of it. So the classic example is the more food that's put in front of us, the more we consume plates over the last two or 300 years alone have doubled in size, therefore portions have doubled in size and consumption as a society has doubled in size. Well, what he said is if we simply constrain resources, it's forced frugality, you have to work with those parameters, but something greater happens and it's innovation. So I suspect what's happened with you, Chris, it's happened with my business and the folks that I get case studies from is as they take their profit first, the concept is cash flows in, take a percentage first, hide it away from yourself. So now you have less cash available that you work within those parameters. And when you say you need something, but don't have the cash to do it, it forces innovative thought. How do I get that new technology or new equipment? Can I negotiate a deal? Uh, can I get used stuff? Uh, can I just delay the purchase for now? But we think much more frugally and more innovatively. The other key though, is removing that temptation. If we don't hide away the profits from ourselves and it just sits there in front of us, it can become very tempting to borrow from it. By taking your profit first, you're reverse engineering profitability. And it used to be, say, a $1,000 deposit came in. I used to say, oh, I have $1,000. That's not the reality. It has multiple responsibilities. The first being a profit. And maybe I take 200 bucks for profit. Some is to pay myself a normalized salary, which is different than profit. Profit is a reward for owning a business and taking the risk you've taken to start 19 companies. Thank you. You're contributing to our economy. That's huge. You also get a salary for the work you do within some or all of those companies. Then, as you said, Uncle Sam will come and knock in. And uh, I hate to say it, there's not many ways around it. Yes, you want to work with an accountant who can reduce your tax consequences, but in part, we're an agent for the government. So when you sell something for $1,000, the government has a take they get, which could be upwards of you know 30% or something. That money is going to go to them. So we have to reserve for taxes. And then the last part is for the continuance of the business, we call it OPEX. Well, when you go through the system, a $1,000 deposit isn't $1,000 in your hand. It may be about $300 to operate your business. It's a little bit of a brutal wake-up call when you first do this, but then it's human nature. We quickly adjust thanks to Parkinson's law, work off of those true operating expenses, expenditures, and the profit accumulates. Our pay is consistent. And yes, we have money to pay Uncle Sam. Your real estate business lives and dies by the network and the connections that you make. I mean, after all, your network, well, it's your net worth. That's what you always heard, right? If that's an area where you desire improvement, well, Private Money Club, for you. PMC saves you precious time and money by bringing the real estate world, well, right to you, right in the palm of your hand. So get in on the action like so many others have by going to privatemoneyclub.com and sign up. Yeah. And, you know, we've even gotten creative with the names of our accounts. Like, oh, that's cool. One of our companies, we call it the war chest. And what that is, is I oh, know I the markets that. are going to fall apart. And when they do, I want this reserve account that's just there to gobble up our competitors and just take yeah. market share. So we call that the war chest. And I've even taken the war chest. The war chest has gotten big, you know, high six figures. And I'm like, I don't want the bank hanging on to that money. I don't trust banks. And that's why I teach people how to create private banking systems. So what I started actually doing is siphoning money from the war chest and then creating almost another account, you know, another segregated account. And some of that money goes to private loans. Some of that money goes into the specially designed whole life policies where that money then grows with compound interest. And we just deploy it after that. Then I got my reserve account because, hey, you know, when things do fall apart, my business could take a hit. I want to make sure my staff, my bills and everything get paid. And then taxes, of course. But I, the other thing I've done is I've taken what, and I think you taught this in the book, but 
I've I've taken these these separate accounts, the war chest, the reserve account, and I've spread them out between different types of institutions. You know, I use my tax account. I do it over at TD Ameritrade. I do, you know, some of the other accounts that we're saving up for, you know, different things that we're going to expand. And those are yeah. done inside the, the whole life policies. And so I've, I've actually just taken what you taught and I've said, hey, this would be cool if I could get uninterrupted compound interest on it. This would be cool if I had this money over here so that I can't take it even in, you know, hell and high water if I want it. It's harder to get. So yeah. I've just played these games and and uh it it's it's pretty incredible. And, and you know, I want to just pause quick, Mike, because we're piping this book profit first up so much. Why don't we give some copies away? Your yeah. sponsor, Relay Bank, which is is appropriate because we're talking about banking and what we do here, but Relay Bank has agreed to give away 10 books to all of you listening to this. Mike, do you want to talk a little bit about what's going on with this? Yeah, yeah. So they're a banking platform, meaning it's all online. You can set up your accounts in seconds. And they've designed their system to work specifically and exclusively with Profit First. They're the first banking system to do this, and they've done it perfectly. So once this was developed, uh, I was like, I'm all in on this. By the way, it was two years in the process of developing this to make sure they adhered to the profit first principles. So uh, I set up a real simple link, bank like Mike. <laughs> and what will happen is uh, if you're looking for a new bank or an adjunct, a secondary bank, I think they're the one to check out. Go to banklikemike.com. And uh, as a little reward to incentivize people to check it out, uh, normally they give me they would give me like an affiliate fee of some sort. Instead, I'm plowing it back into you. So $50 will go back into your account if you sign up through Bank Like Mike. So consider it an automatic, immediate first profit contribution gift from me or from Relay, however you want to see it. It'll go into your account. Um, and cool. and anyone that uh, goes to uh, sign up for this will also get into a raffle of, of 10 profit first books. So uh, hopefully you can enjoy the book too. Well, that's even better. I mean, I was reading my notes, but I knew we were giving 10 books away. I didn't know you were giving everybody 50 bucks. And 50, yeah, and everybody and anybody. Yeah, 50 bucks. And I don't know how long that's running. So I, I don't want to say it's like the next month or the next year. Uh, it's really not more than a year. So um, if you're interested, do it now. Forget about a year. Like, listen, if I want my daughter to clean her room, I don't say, hey, sweetie, clean up your playroom. I say, clean up your playroom right now, yeah. or I'm not going to give you your phone today. And, and, yeah. the, and the room just magically gets cleaned up. This is a three-year-old. So folks, everybody listening to this, you all know that I always talk about knowledge and how important it is. But knowledge is useless unless you take action on that knowledge. The time is now. 50 bucks is on the table. Like, just hit pause on this podcast right now. We'll wait for you. <laughs> we'll wait, hit pause, and then go and sign up for 50 bucks. We're talking about creating segregated accounts and using the Profit First system. You now have a bank to do it at, and it's $50 in your bank account to do it. Like, what the heck would you wait on to do that? Like, why would you wait? Like, there's no yeah. reason to do it. And oh. it is the, and I'm not, trying to brag on them too much, but it is the best bank. There's no fee checking, all that stuff. All the accounts are set up for you automatically. And it's not an envelope system. A lot of banks make these what's called sub accounts and that won't support profit first because you can overdraw on one account and it pulls from another and that defeats the system. This will keep you locked into your appropriate spend. So that OPEX, if it's 300 bucks, you got 300 bucks to work with. It forces the system, which is really powerful and necessary for profit first. Yeah. And for any of you listening, and we're talking about these different terms, if you're confused, it's just because you haven't read the book. So, you know, get in the running to get one of the free 10 books. But I would even say, don't even wait for that. If you get the free book, give it to somebody because the act of giving is the most powerful thing you can do. So just buy the book. I did. I got the audio book. It's phenomenal. And if you want to read the paper book, then grab the paper book or get both. Some people listen while they read. That's true. That's what that. I do with my favorite books. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? All right. So let's let's pivot real quick, Mike. I want to go over to your new book, All yeah. In. Can you talk a little bit about the motivation behind this one and what it teaches? Yeah, I'm really lucky, Chris, that quite a few of my readers and I are in regular contact. And one regular question I have is, where are you stuck now? Or what's the challenge? And maybe this is probably because of the COVID pandemic and the new work environment. Maybe it's just the nature of a growing business. It's probably a combination thereof. A lot of people are struggling to find a team. And the most, a good team. And the most common question I hear is, I wish I could find an employee that acts like an owner. I wish my employees would act like owners. So I was like, okay, that's what I need to figure out. So this started, my research started actually pre-COVID because I was hearing that and I really doubled down in 2020. And I found some unique formulas. So I want to share a couple things that you can act on right now. 
It's all included in the book. And All In is my newest book. It's not released yet. It's coming out on January 2nd, 2024, but you can pre-order it on Amazon. But what I found is most businesses, most companies try to do uh, traditional recruiting. We run an ad on Indeed, for example, and then we do some interviews. It's pretty exhausting. You rarely find a good candidate this way. Um, and even if you do find a candidate that you consider, the chance of them working out is 50-50. And everyone else that you interviewed, they don't get a job opportunity, so they don't know why they weren't qualified or not, and they keep looking. So my question was, how do you elevate everybody? How does everyone through the process come out better? And you get the best candidate in the world who acts like an owner. Well, I found organizations that already do this. And what it is, is in the sports arena. Specifically, college recruiting is famous for this. Now professionals do this too. I played uh, lacrosse in college, well, in high school and college. But in high school, I went to a camp at Hobart, uh, New York, which is northeastern or northwestern New York state. And I didn't realize this, but about 300 kids, students went there. And some of the athletes were getting tapped on the shoulder. I wasn't, but some were saying, hey, you're doing a great job here. We'd like to bring you to another field. And they started vetting out the elite players from the standard folks like me, I guess. And everyone in the process got better. Everyone got put into the group, but the, the university was cherry picking students to play for them. It's a recruiting platform. So it's like, oh, if you run a camp where everyone gets educated, you can find the people who have the most thirst and desire to go to the next level and cherry pick them, but everyone's improving. So I'm like, there must be a business application. Well, sure enough, some corporations have been doing this without us knowing. Next time you go to Home Depot, watch what they do. Go for when they build the birdhouse. You know, bring your, your three-year-old daughter, build a birdhouse with us. They invite all the parents in. You'll see there'll be one or two employees there observing what's going on, one instructing, but others observing. The instructor is teaching you how to build the workhouse and uh, the birdhouse. They want to ingratiate you with the brand. They want you to buy stuff there. But the other employees are scouting for future Home Depot employees. They want to see the most participative parent, the one that's helping others, that knows what they're talking about, and has um, some wherewithal around this type of activity. They'll then tap that person on the shoulder and say, hey, you're really showing some great skill here and some interest. You ever consider working part-time or full-time for Home Depot? We would be honored to have someone like you. They're cherry picking the best parents to become employees. We can run a workshop for our own business. It can be online. It can be in person. But say I need a bookkeeper. I could run a bookkeeping workshop and I could teach some basic book skill, bookkeeping skills if that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a higher end bookkeeper. I can run an advanced class where there's a prerequisite. You must already be a bookkeeper and we're going to be teaching high end stuff. And the beautiful thing is I don't need to teach this. I don't do bookkeeping. I could simply hire or leverage a bookkeeper in my network and say, hey, would you teach this class for an hour? Maybe I pay them for it. But now I'm attracting people who are showing interest. They want to learn this next level. And I can observe their participation, tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, you're doing such a great job. We have an opportunity here at our company. Would you want to come on board? Everyone's elevated and you cherry pick the best. Wow. What a great idea. And it's funny, as you started talking about it, the first thing I did is I went to my phone and I'm trying to buy the book and I noticed, well, then you said it wasn't out yet. Yeah. So folks, if you're going to search for it, don't make the mistake and just search all in. You got to search all in and then Mike's name, Mike yeah. McCallowitz. Or just all in Mike. Yeah, it's, it's literally that new. It's still not listed. It will, it'll get to the number one spot pretty soon, but literally it just got listed on Amazon, I think like yesterday. So all in Mike is what to look for. for yeah, sure. there you go. So you see two hands shaking. The end is two hands shaking. That's the one. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So I, I want to uh, thanks, brother. want to make sure I save some of the the error that I just made because I'm like, oh, where is it? And then yeah. you said that. So that made perfect sense. So I love it. I love it. Well, I know we're coming short on time. And, you know, I think that was just pretty incredible what you did. You gave up your affiliate, which is the act of giving so that $50 can go in people's accounts when they go there. So what was that website again? So banklikemike.com. Bank Super like easy. Mike. Now, bank folks, like gonna, Mike. And it is my, it is my bank, by the way. I'm not just like saying, oh, you check them out. That is my bank. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to put that in the in the notes, folks. So just go to the description, click the link. It'll take you right there. And as long as the, the you know, as long as you don't wait, you'll get 50 bucks and you'll be put in the running to get one of the 10 books. And Mike, just as we kind of get to the end of this, is there anything you'd like to say to my audience that you think would give them just an, an added little boost to go out there and apply what you teach in your book? For sure, for sure. If you are a freelancer or a solopreneur, or maybe you're starting a small business or, or have a bigger small business, 
I've been doing some research and there's a popular saying that small business is the backbone of the economy. Well, I look at the data and I do have news. Small business is not the backbone of the economy. Small business is the economy. I've looked at it and here's what I've discovered. Every business that exists today started off as a small business or someone with a small idea that they expanded and grew into something massive. Everything was seeded by small business. Small business is our economy. And so we need your success. We need you to be profitable. This isn't a selfish or greedy thing. It's not about you making all the riches in the world and living an amazing life. I want that for you because it's also about when you achieve things like that, you are contributing to our economy and fueling everyone else's life. So we need small business success because you are the economy. Crush it. Love it. I love it. You know, and I know this podcast has a ton of self-employed individuals out there just crushing it. Yeah. Add these principles in this book and your business will be so much better, so much more profitable. And you won't be coming to work saying, how come everybody's making more money than I am? That's what I used to say. That will change very quickly and it will not affect your business. So folks, get out there take action, grab a copy of his book, and hey, I'll sweeten the deal. You can have a copy of my book, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, nice. which shows how we have applied this strategy with what we teach in the infinite banking concept. So folks, grab a copy of that just by going to chrisnoggle.com. You already know that, but I just want to bring that up. So you got your chance to get two free books, 50 bucks, and you learn something new. Mike, this has been a real pleasure. Thank you for coming back on the show. It's been a joy. Thanks for having me back, Chris. We'll see everybody later. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the podcast. We will see you on the next one.